Hi, welcome back to the channel. So today I got some interesting news in my inbox regarding Scrivener. Uh, for those of you who run uh, Scrivener on Windows like I do, uh, you might be pleasantly surprised of what just got announced today. Uh, I've been waiting for this news for about three years now and I've been checking every so often to see if they finally updated it, but as you can see, Scrivener 3, which the Mac users, those lucky old Mac users have had access to for a while now, uh, us uh, lowly Windows users finally get access to the higher echelon of Scrivener. And so that's what we're going to look at today. I'm going to, um, I still have Scrivener 1 installed, so I'm going to do a kind of a before and after. I'm not going to demonstrate this. I mean, obviously you guys can go do your own thing. Um, but I just want to see what the difference is between 1 and 3 as far as aesthetics go. So I am going to open up my document for an ebook I'm working on for my mailing list and see how that compares. So hang out and we'll, uh, we'll look at the differences. All right, so this is my Scrivener 1 document. I do have whatever the update is. I guess it's 1.99957 time B2. But um, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade to 3 here in a second. But I want to show you guys the difference here so you all can know what you're getting into if you're still on Scrivener 1 as of this recording. Uh, this is my uh, ebook I'm doing for my mailing list called Paperweight. It's actually based on a short story I wrote month or years ago that I just wanted to expand on to an actual novella. Um, but uh, so far I have four chapters. But this is a uh, designer now. I do have it split on the, the double split here. I uh, just put in my synopses. So if I go to my corkboard, I can not see anything. I, I never get this right. Um, let's see here. Uh, la, 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 la. I got to go to drafts. Yeah, there we go. And so, like, if I want to see all my synopses by corkboard, I've got that. Um, and of course, if I want to go back to my regular main view, um, or that's my outline view, and this is my draft view. Um, and then, of course, if I wanted to get rid of the uh, split, I go back to another to the full screen. I just hit that. And then, once again, if I go to the draft. Now this is still set for showing everything that I've got in front of me. Uh, so right now I'm, I've got synopsis by chapter highlighted for some reason. But if I go back to chapter one, drop. Anyway, that's um, how this looks by um, the old standard. Of course you have all your usuals up here. And the only reason why I'm I'm writing all, or I'm showing all this off, is I want to compare the differences between the old Scrivener 1 and then the new style because the new style does have uh, just a whole range of new options. So we'll look at those first and then we'll go ahead and download and restore. Now I do want to make note I'm not going to download on camera because it's going to ask for uh, my product ID and all that so I'm going to keep all my privacy in check. So I will be doing a before and after uh, but I want to just show you the, the page if you have not seen the update yet. Now just a quick note, if you are updating from Scrivener 1 and you're on Windows, uh, what you're going to pay for the updates can depend on when you bought it. If you bought Scrivener 1 after November 20th, 2017, then you're going to get it for free. So you may as well just go and download it. But if you bought before, like I did, uh, you're going to have to pay a little bit, but you're, you're going to get it at a steep discount. So in our case, it's going to be 49% off. So if I paid $40, I'm only going to be paying 20 for the update. So that's what I can uh, expect. But uh, if you do need to update, just go to their update guide. Um, to figure out how to do that, and so that's what I'm going to be following next. Uh, but before I do that, we're going to go ahead and also look and see what we're going to get with our update. So that's really the best part. So let's take a look. So this is going to be what Scrivener 3 will offer us once we get into the program. Um, again, I'm not going to explore everything on camera, so that's just going to be a lot, and I need to uh, actually do that on my own so I know what I'm getting myself into. But this is the page that's going to show us everything that's new, and if we didn't want to uh, certainly look into it, we'll just go to our introducing Scrivener 3 page and find out all the stuff that it adds. So this is some of the stuff that it adds. Um, it adds discounts for owners of one. And of course it looks like it has some uh, visual updates and things. Uh, so I mean, it just, uh, to me it looks like it's going to be a pretty nice little update. Um, so the interface has been overhauled, modernized, uh, compiler has been redesigned and now not is now not only easier to use but also more flexible. That's good because the compile that was the worst part of that one. In fact, I never really used the compile. I think, but to try it, and I just didn't like how it panned out. So it'd be interesting to see what Scrivener three can do on the compile. I may test it, um, but we'll see. I do have um, 
uh, what is it, uh, caliber right now for making me pubs, which I think is really useful, and you don't need to do a lot to make them. So, as far as I'm concerned, caliber is still the way to go, but uh, this is, uh, could be good. Uh, the text system now has a full style system, which is even more powerful than uh, used when the new compile, okay. View index cards and colored threads based on label color, great for attracting different storylines or anything else. So it looks like they got a little bit of that plotter going in there, that's good. Improved ebook e export, always a good thing. Keep track of how much you write each day using writing history. I feel like that's already kind of in the Scrivener 1, but it is what it is. Uh, improved custom metadata allows you to add checkboxes, dates, and list boxes to inspect your outliner. Enhanced outlining, uh, can never have too much outlining. Refer to up to four documents in the main window using the new copy holder features. I think I like the idea of that. Is, is that what, uh, I don't know, I gotta check that out. Because I like the split view, and if I have four views, that's even better. Or worse, I don't know, it depends on your perspective. Um, quickly find any document in your project using the new quick search tool. Again, they've already had that. Um, C draft and session progress parts toolbar is it uh, oh maybe it's uh, also improving on the stuff that we already have maybe that's what it is maybe it's not adding new stuff uh, let's see C draft and session progress bars okay and toolbar dedicated dark mode along with numerous other visual themes so this is good a lot of people like dark mode I actually um, I've gotten used to using dark mode on things like affinity photo and designer and publisher so I'm, I'm kind of used to it. and even my website that I've been building that I've been having a constantly uh, reset because I keep getting these uh, glitches. In fact, I just had one not long ago where again, I lost 17 pages. So I'm having to rebuild those. Uh, fortunately, I've saved the templates of those, but that's a sidebar. Uh, it, it's still coming. I, I just got off. I was on with support for the last couple hours and they were walking me through the things that could be go wrong. And I think I've narrowed it down to what the issues are. So hopefully I won't have any more crashes. Uh, that's a sidebar for those still wondering why my website's not open yet. But anyway, um, that whole point being is I think dark mode looks pretty good. Uh, the powerful new bookmarks feature replaces project notes. Um, that's interesting. That I got to look into because I do like my project notes. Um, references and favorites and allows you to view off needed documents right in the inspector and then use dialog focus to pick out all the dialog in your text. Okay. And then just some more stuff down here you can read on your own. Uh, the other thing is they make a note that um, the whole reason why they've skipped Scrivener 2 is because Scrivener 2 came out for Mac, at, they had already released two for Mac when they had just released one for Windows, because remember, um, the Mac and Windows builds were completely separate, like it's different teams working on them, different code and everything. Because you know, when you work with a certain operating system, then you wanna make sure you're using the code that matches that operating system. And so when they, when the whole reason why they're going right to three, because they wanna have the um, cross branding between all their operating systems and all, the, all their apps. So they just didn't see any reason to uh, bother with giving us a, a Windows-only version of Scrivener 2 when they can just integrate all of those features in. And if I recall, I think Scrivener 2, uh, you know, I think it, it, the only real improvements over Scrivener 2, I think we're all uh, online-based, I want to say. There, I remember looking through the list and not being that impressed. So I think jumping to 3 is probably pretty good. But anyway, I don't expect Windows 3 to be up-to-date with Mac 3. I'm sure you know Mac has had about three or four years ahead of Windows, and that includes the Scrivener 3 version. So I'm sure we're still going to be lagging as far as features go uh, that the Mac version has. But the idea is at least now we're with back within the scope of, of what those improvements can be. So hopefully uh, this will be good. And of course, once you buy three, you're going to get all the three updates throughout the next couple years or however long it takes them to go to Scrivener 4. So with that, let's go ahead and I'm going to sign off for a second. I'm going to download. I'm going to go through the process of activating my account again. And then I'm going to load up my file um, that I just showed you in the new format. And we'll look at the comparisons. And then hopefully by then you guys will see what you're getting yourself into if you should get Skidmore 3. But that's all we're going to do on the video. I'm not going to demonstrate it because I haven't really researched it as far as hands-on. But I just wanted to announce what has been announced to me. And I figure it's good. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to just do a quick pause and I'll be back as soon as I have everything loaded. Actually, just a quick interjection. Um, I'm looking at the downloads page, and of course, if you don't have a copy of Scrivener, you're gonna get a free trial. You're actually gonna get a free trial no matter uh, what version of Scrivener you have or don't have. Um, the idea is if you own a copy already, you just put in your license key and then it updates and all that, and then they'll go into like the store page. But I wanted to make a note real quick, the free trial, for those of you who don't actually have Scrivener, I didn't even realize this, um, you, 
you do get 30 days of uh, free use, but what's interesting is it's not 30 days from the day you download it, it's 30 days of use. So if you download it today and then you don't use it until let's say sometime in June, and use it just once, and then use it again in July like a couple times, uh, that's gonna be three days. So um, this is actually really interesting if you guys are really on the fence. You're getting a really generous trial here. So I just want to throw that out there if you're, if you're not familiar with it. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and continue on. I just wanted to point that out. And then just, again, this is the download page. So if you're wondering, you can follow along um, your own page if you can. Okay, so I downloaded Scrivener 3 and then I tried to uh, start it up. And there was a pop-up that comes up that asks you if you're renewing from one or if you're buying and all that and it's basically the same uh, general screen that you get when you go from a trial to a paid version on the original version um, the problem is that right now I guess their, their licensing servers are not working properly uh, I know there's been some problems but I'm gonna be actually be doing this off the um, trial version for now because uh, my efforts to get the paid version has been a little limited because it's not recognizing my license and again it's not just me it's a lot of people are coming against this problem so if you are watching this hopefully they've resolved it uh, but for now I'm going to be showing you guys the trial um, I do want to emphasize a couple things if you are transitioning from one to three there is a um, user guide uh, or a transition guide which I have behind the screen um, if you go to the website you can look that up but uh, just real quick I'll show you um, I'm not going to download the thing but if you do need to figure out how to uh, work with the changes this is where you would go to do that. And uh, the big thing that I guess they're showing differences is in the um, the compiling, which again, I don't really use the compiler, so it's just for me, it's not gonna be that necessary. Uh, but anyway, well, I went ahead and I offloaded my paperweight story to Word. It's just kind of a backup in case uh, this makes uh, my version on one unusable, which is possible. Um, but uh, as you can see, I have no connection the problem is with Scrivener 3, it is a new uh, file entirely. So it's going to, um, when you actually install the program, it's going to install into a brand new folder. So Scrivener 3 and Scrivener 1 are not going to be compatible, or they're not going to talk to each other as far as where your project comes from. So you will probably ultimately have to um, import everything fresh. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that real quick and then I'm gonna see how the thing looks. But as you can see, this is the, um, the opening screen. This is, um, all the same stuffs are, are in here. Uh, I noticed though it didn't take my uh, template from the few that I made on the other uh, things. So I probably will have to um, re-import those as well. Um, but anyway, this is all about uh, just checking it out and seeing how it goes. So. I'm going to go ahead and let's see what happens when I open an existing project. All right, so I'm in the paperweight uh, file, and we're going to open and see if it does okay without... All right, so updating project. The project you're trying to load uses an older file format. Would you like to update it? Copy the old project will be saved in the same directory. Um, yes. So we are going to take a chance on that and see how this looks. Ah, there it is. So one thing, again, they change is the project file. Um, I'm going to um, actually pause the video real quick. I'm going to resize this. I have this, my video cropped um, for uh, web, but I'm going to just pause real quick just so we can reset. One second. All right, so now we're in full view, and already I can see some of the major changes are in just in the design look. Um, oh, that's cool. If you hover over the chapter, you get to see the work. Oh, that's actually really cool. I like that. Um, but yeah, it saved my uh, split chapter now. I don't know if that's by default or if it just remembered that I had it set. Um, I guess maybe if I go, uh, that's my notes. Um, see, notes is, um, uh, whoops, I think I can fix that. So notes replaces the project binder. So that's one of the things they said is different. Uh, but this all looks like it's kind of in the same boat here. Um, toggle image. Oh, that's cool. I can have a, um, a section or a section picture, that's cool. Uh, bookmarks, so this is the new thing that replaces the projects. So if I wanna do bookmarks, this is where that would go. Okay, that's cool. Um, custom metadata, that's probably something. I don't have metadata for this particular project, so um, I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate that. I'd have to go to probably one of my uh, long journals or something for that. 
Um, my uh, my use of Scrivener is still primarily text with some organization. Um, so the way I use it may be a little different. Oh, this is still exactly the same. That's cool. I can uh, not get lost in there. Um, but uh, it'd be interesting to see how some of my templates, like the uh, NaNoWriMo template or my story plan in general, will translate. So that'd be interesting to do. Um, but this is, oh, this is a new menu entirely. Show overrun. Um, I guess if you go into a sprint, maybe? Huh, that's interesting. Okay. Um, and again, I'm not, we're not necessarily going to be using this on camera. I just want to see what the differences are, uh, just for everyone's information. So um, one thing about the new version, I don't think, maybe there's a way to fix it. What I like about uh, Scribner 1 is it highlights this entire bar to show you which one's highlighted. I don't love that there's just a little you know, simple line here. Um, my inspector's over here. I'm going to leave that on. I guess it's nice that it's either on by default or, or maybe, no, I think it's still taking from what I had. Um, So, well, yeah, what I'll probably need to do is I'll need to set up my clipboard again uh, to mimic what I had before. I had, like, my project notes and everything up here. Uh, some of this other stuff here. Um, let's see if I go into format. So much stuff. Um, I think layouts is where I had it. You know, themes. Oh, okay, here's where we do dark mode, if you want dark mode. Oh, okay, never mind. I'm not going to restart it. That's where you do it. So, we'll go back to default. Okay. Alright, I'm scheduled. Alright, let's check out the, um, the whole large, uh, the corkboard scene here. Okay. So, so far what it looks like to me is it looks like you have to go back and freshly customize everything. It didn't really do the best job of giving you all that uh, you had set. Like, I guess you do have to redesign your page according to what you want, which is fine. That's something I can do as I go. I, right now, for this particular story, I'm not really interested in all of this. I just want to get the draft done. But I still nevertheless wanted to see how things look differently. Uh, the outliner looks about the same. So no major changes there. Um, I guess the big question is, is this really worth the upgrade right now? I mean, it's version three. I imagine it would be. Um, but it looks to me like it still primarily works exactly as the last version. Um, if there's anything new, I'll have to read up on that. But you know, the main thing is the aesthetics. Uh, it's definitely cleaner. And that was really the main reason why I wanted this, is I wanted a nice cleaner interface. Because the old uh, one point whatever nine five two or I don't whatever it was, it was uh, just getting a little clunky for me and and uh, I just you know I definitely want whatever is the new thing. Um, this is interesting. Um, actually, I wonder. I might have to look and see how the. Um, Hyperlinks work now because it used to be. Huh. Yeah, there's a couple of things I feel like are different that I'm not sure. Like when you do um, the live, or no, maybe it's, maybe it's under insert this time, or no, it was under documents, I think is what the old one was. Documents. Um, hmm. Well, you can see what all the new features are just in this um, particular section. Again, a lot of the stuff feels like it's the same. Yeah, I don't know. It makes me wonder, did it really change that enough for me to think that this is a needed update? I mean, again, I missed uh, Scrivener 2, so I don't know 
what they offer in Skipper 2 um, that I didn't have in 1 that's um, exclusive to 2 and not 3. I don't know, it's just, it's very, it's one of those things I'm going to have to explore. Um, this is like my first impression. Um, let me see, I feel like I need to look at, um, oh, you know what, actually, let's do this. Let's go to note cards again. Can I do anything special here? Okay, so I'm back to jump. If I go over here to my note cards real quick, uh, let's do our labels. Um, we'll do chapter, let's just see what happens with that. Because that was one of the things they did differently is color coding. And then the status is, um, I think, am I still, I guess, is, kind of want to do like an in progress you know let's do an in progress real quick sorry i may have cut off uh the bottom of my screen it's uh gave me a, these options here i think i'm gonna add one called um in progress what this means is i'm not done with the draft i just you know need to um, continue to work so i'm going to make this an, an in progress status and so we have the little I, I hope you guys can see that. That's the little label that cuts across. Probably needs to be darker, so that's something I may need to update for my uh, for the future. Um, but uh, yeah, I think one thing that's nice about this is it's not obtrusive. Um, so that's I guess the one thing is um, or intrusive. I guess is what I want. Um, it's a little light for me right now, so I will have to probably change it. But I think having the ability to be able to see, an, see a nice clear color code and not something that, that's inundating. Like I know with the note cards, uh, having the lines there, um, I like the, the lines personally. In fact, I'm sure there's probably a way to get those back. Uh, I'm sure if I could go and explore the uh, formatting and stuff a bit more, I'd probably find that. Um, but yeah, I like the, um, I, I do like the clean look on this. And I just, I like the, how it's, it's a little easier to see things. Um, but I'm sure too. I can probably customize the look of the of the uh, note cards. There's a. I gotta remember how to do that because it's been a while since I've actually messed with note cards. So I can't remember entirely what uh, how to do that. But um, it's one of the things I can explore on the side. Um, writing direction. What's that? Ooh, that's an interesting option. Um, I'm not sure if Scrivener won't have that option. If you look at the statistics here, so this is the statistics board. Um, here's what I have so far for this particular work. Selected documents. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Oh, and they do this for the compile too. Okay, that's actually really cool. Okay, yeah, I like this this feature. So let me see here. So that's for everything. This is, and this is, again, this is going to be under the draft section, I imagine. Um, I don't think it's going to include uh, the stuff under notes. Probably time. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is how, how it looks. It's uh, This is Scrivener for Windows 3, no, 3. And we finally got what well, I've been waiting a long time for. Freeform Court Order. Is that what? Oh. Okay. Can I move it? Uh, wait, I can move it forward. Oh, I can. It's a little laggy because, uh, you know, my computer is just that way. Oh, that's nice. Can I do that on the main board? Uh, nope, that's pretty form. Oh, I see free form just means literally put it wherever you want. Now, it would be nice if I could um, reset it. But, okay, I don't know if um, Scrimmer 1 had this feature. That's really cool. And what do we have here? Range by label. Oh, okay, so this would be like a timeline. So this is going to put plotter in. <laughs> Sorry, plotter. Um, oh, I see that. Okay, so with the pink being, um, what did I put pink for? Chapter. And what are these? No label. Okay. All right, that's cool. Um, this obviously you probably want to do full screen. Uh, I think uh, split screen is not that helpful. How did I get rid of this split screen? Oh, up here. Oh, I see. It's a toggle this time. Okay. It used to be side by side. Um, go back to this. 
Ah, here we go. So if you go to full screen and then do this, it makes it easier to see. Then yeah, it kind of makes uh, kind of makes you wonder if you still need plotter, doesn't it? Hmm. I like plotter. Don't get me wrong, plotter. Oh, by the way, they have um, some updates coming that are really good. I, I want to do a video on that. I keep meaning to do a follow-up video on plotter, but that's sidebar. Uh, there's some cool stuff coming down the line. But this is uh, definitely feels like it's it's uh, filling in the the gap pretty well. And I don't know. Let's see what we got here. Um, all right, so this is still the outliner. Nothing particularly outstandingly new here. Um, I got to figure out what that's about. I'm not sure how the bookmarks work. I'm not going to experiment with that on screen. Um, the other thing I want to see here, what do we got down here? I don't know section, copy holder, I don't know what that means. Oh, copy holder. Hold on, let's click it. Let's see what that looks like. Can I do it? Maybe can we go back over here? Um, all right, I'm not actually sure what the copy holder does. All right, so let's go back to this. I thought there was a way to do four. That's what the thing. Uh, is this it? Report options. Oh, okay. So you can still do your um, design or report board. That's cool. All right, well, let's go ahead. That's good enough for now. Uh, that should give you guys an idea of what's new in Scrivener 3, um, for the most part, how the aesthetics have changed. Uh, so I hope that's a good side-by-side -side to see the difference if you are interested in getting the new version. If you are running Windows, if you're running Mac, I'm sure you probably had it, and you, you're laughing at the rest of us because you've had it for three years, and, you know, you're elite and special, and, you know, congratulations again for being a Mac owner. You know, welcome to... Uh, I'm I'm glad we finally get to join your club. So, anyway, I'll um I guess I'll continue to work on this through this version. Um, I will eventually have the licensed version once the licensing server kicks in. Again, if you're a previous owner, if you bought it um, November twentieth, twenty seventeen, or more more recently, which I think is probably when Scrivener three came out on Mac, uh, you will get the update for free once their servers are registering with the licensing. If you got it before, like I did, I got mine in 2015, um, you will be paying half price if you upgrade. Uh, but nevertheless, it's worth the upgrade, I'm sure. Um, I'm gonna upgrade officially once, I, uh, once I'm given the, the ability to. Uh, I do like the format. It's, it doesn't, it's not that much different from what I had, so I'm sure I'll get used to it pretty quickly. It's just a matter of you know, figuring out uh, what's changed and, and relaying out my systems here. And of course, I'll have to update some of my templates um to the new format which i'll i'll be doing most of it after i get the official license i think until then i'll be working on my other work on the old version um not this one this one uh, i'll keep on this version here but um anyway but that's uh scripture three and hope uh hope you all take a look at it and again if you do get it and you um you need to figure out what's new or how to fix it just go back to the site and get the update guide um, that'll definitely show you some, some tips on how to use the new features. I may do it. I don't know yet. Um, I feel like I didn't learn enough about Scripper 1. Didn't even know what I'm missing or what's changed. But um, they say, like, if you're brand new to Scribner, you probably don't need the guide because it's just a matter of learning Scribner. You know, and by the way, if you guys are new to Scribner, if you've never seen Scribner, I, I, it's been around long enough now. I hope most of you have uh, gotten familiar with it. Uh, but if you do need to know more about Scribner, um, check it out. I have uh, some videos uh, back from the summer 2019 that I compared this to Y-Rider. Uh, I was tempted to add this as part of the Y-Rider set, but I think for now I'm just going to leave it as a, its own thing um, since it has nothing really to do with Y-Rider. But um, you can check out some of those videos to see how it compares with more of the features. Then also check out a um, couple of my videos on some of the templates that I made. Scrivener, like the NaNoWriMo template, and then um, the Story Planning General. I think that one's only accessible through my blog. I don't think I publicized that one. Well, I, I think you, in order to view that one, I think you have to actually go to my blog and go to the Story Templates. Um, uh, select, or it's in the miscellaneous. It, it's a it, it's a bit of a thing to find it, but um, when you go through my templates on my, my blog, uh, I have a link to uh, some Scrivener templates, and I think you can find the video on uh, story planning in general in there too uh, but I will give you some other ideas on just Scrivener in action but um, but overall yeah I think this is a again it's all about the aesthetics for me and I think this one looks nice so 
Uh, I'm happy with it. I, I'll definitely look forward to having it more official. Um, anyway. Tell me what you think. Um, leave your comments. Tell me if you like Scrivener 3. Uh, if you like Scrivener at all. And then um, don't forget to like, subscribe, do all the things that YouTubers tell you to do. And uh, continue to watch the channel for updates. I have another writer's um, bookshelf. Bookshelf. Um, I think it's on creating characters on Friday. And then um, I think that's everything for now. I think you're all caught up. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.